Mrs. Christensen, and this is Modern Civilization. I am your, your um, child's teacher. And just some quick background about me. I'm from San Fernando Valley. I have a bachelor's degree in history teaching with a Spanish teaching minor. And I did a study abroad in Chile, which is where I um, continued to study Spanish. I have a master's degree in English language learners that I got at Western Governors University just a few years ago, I went back. I've been teaching social studies in Spanish actually more about 14 years. This is my fifth year at um, West Branch. I taught in Santa Cruz and I also taught in Park City. So the class curriculum looks like this. Um, we've got unit one was the roots of democracy and democratic revolutions. We're actually still in that unit right now. We're working on the French Revolution at this moment. Um, unit two is the industrial revolution. Three, then we'll get to nationalism and imperialism. And then unit four is World War One, and that's where we're going to stop for the semester. Next semester, we'll cover rise of totalitarian states, the causes and effects of World War II and the Cold War, and then we'll get into some nationalism and um, terrorism. So the way the grades work in this course, um, our tests are worth 40%, classwork and homework is 45%, Projects are 10% and participation is 5% of their grade. So make sure they're participating. I'm encouraging them to do so as well. So our online classroom expectations is really to focus on good netiquette, but also be involved in the class. So students should arrive on time to our Zoom meetings. Attendance is going to be taken each day. I take it at the beginning of the period as they're entering into the classroom, but then I'm also paying attention if they're leaving the class early. I also expect them to have their videos on throughout the class period so that I can see what they're doing. And it just kind of makes for um, a more cohesive class experience because then I also have the opportunity to ask questions and see them nod or thumbs up, thumbs down. We do all sorts of things like that in class. And um, so video should always be on. Also, students should mute their microphones as they enter the class. And then at times, I do want them to talk and participate. But if everyone's unmuted, then we get a lot of background noise. So it's really good to kind of to keep it muted at the beginning. I put this respect in our screen right here because that's my bottom line on how everyone should behave in class. It's, I respect them. They respect me. And that really um, helps them with their behavior. If they just understand that one thing, then they don't talk when someone else is talking, they're not rude to one another, all of that kind of thing. So respect each other as well. Okay, so our contact information is basically, um, you can get in touch with me the best way is through email. If you wanna get in touch with me um, in more in depth after we initiate our conversation via email, we can talk on the phone, we can set up a Zoom appointment, anything like that works. But the best way initially is to, to email first, if you can do that. Um, and there's a picture here on the right, and normally back to school night would take place in the classroom, but here's a picture of the classroom um, when I came one day last spring and I was doing some, you know, had an opportunity to come into my classroom. I took a quick picture, so here it is, so you can just kind of see where the kids hopefully will end up very soon. All right, I drew this in here as well, just to kind of give you guys an idea about what the class is like. So this is a political cartoon analysis. And it shows, you know, I ask the students to start from, you know, very easy to more in-depth analysis. So first it's just look at the objects and the people you see in the cartoon. Then it's which of the objects in your list are symbols. So then you start saying, okay, well, you know, the man on top symbolizes the wealthy. You see the industrialization in the background. You know, what do you think each symbol means? And you start to get into it a little more describe the action taking place in the cartoon, and then we get into more in depth of what is the message, right? What special interest groups would agree or disagree with this cartoon's message? And so you just go from very simple to more in depth. All right, so here is a link to our Google Classroom. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to mention before I go into our Google Classroom so you can just kind of see what it looks like for your student. And it is that in this course, some of the things we're doing, like activities wise, I'm still trying to do a lot of the activities and make our class as engaging as possible through this virtual learning platform. And so we're doing everything from, um, we use the textbook, but I also do some lecture. We do, we've already um, working on a group activity. 
We do breakout rooms so they get to work in small groups. I have them participate through, you know, raising their hand and then speaking in the Zoom meeting, but also I will encourage like all people to participate by jumping into the chat box um, or doing a question on Google Classroom is another thing that we've done. So here is our link. Let me jump over to our Google Classroom. And so this is period five, but it also looks similar for period six. So either way, um, you're going to see some similarities here. This, this picture looks different for each of the classes and the color background a little bit different. But this is our stream right here. So if you go into the stream, you can see right here, um, I'm recording this on the Wednesday. So at the top of it, the top of the stream is a link for the meeting on that Wednesday. You can see if you um, scroll down, we did a political cartoon as a warm up one day. But then we see our Friday meeting link, which I'll move up because our next meeting is actually Friday, so I can just move that to the top right now. So then that'll be there for the students on Friday. Um, we can scroll down still, and we can see you know, another thing they did. They looked at some Enlightenment thinkers, and um, they learned about the Enlightenment thinkers. And then what they did was they got a, a, a group of pictures with a quote under each one, and then there was a letter on each one. And they had to figure out who said what. And we did that in breakout rooms, so give them a chance to kind of talk in a small group discussion, figure out what they thought, and then come back together and do it and figure it out as a group. So you can get a sense of So here's this stream, and I put a little welcome um, video in with a bad joke, like a you know a silly corny joke because I like corny jokes. Okay, here is our classwork section of Google Classroom. You can see that I want to do some current events. Usually, this is social studies. I definitely keep my bias out of the classroom as far as where I stand politically. But I do like to encourage the students to look at information because I feel like they're future voters with training wheels on right now. So I want them to kind of analyze and think about you know, what goes into voting and all of those kind of things. So they're civic minded. Uh, we did some getting to know each other activities. And one of the things we looked at, you know, is why study history. But we also did, if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? What would be your one superpower if you had one? How would you get your name? Which kind of gives me an introduction on, you know, what are they all about? Okay. Um, course resources are right here. You get your class syllabus right there. And we did a survey about technology to kind of figure out if anyone needed anything else. Here's our unit that we're working in right now. So you can see there's all these assignments in there. And one of the assignments we did was, you know, about the American Revolution. So you see when you click on that assignment, it tells you the directions right there. And then it gives you the um, PDFs right here, or sometimes it's a Google, Google Doc or whatever it is that they need to work on from there. You can see also that the other topics are set up for the rest of the semester, the Industrial Revolution, our next unit nationalism, imperialism, and World War I. So these will start appearing on your son or daughter's screen once we get into those units. So they're not, this is my screen, so they're there already the topics, but they're not there yet for your students. But as soon as I post anything under there, they will show up there as well. So um, they'll be able to find everything they need. I hope this has been helpful. I'm really excited to be your child's teacher this year. I love modern civilization, world history. It's really interesting. We get to really look at you know, what's happened over the last couple hundred years to get us to where we are today. So it's a great course, and um, it should be a lot of fun. Please reach out if you need anything from me, and thank you so much for watching. Take care.